Install lid assembly to gas plenum canister, ensure proper orientation. So I noticed that the uh, gas plenum canister o-ring seal sealing surface is a little dry. So I'm just going to take just a little bit of crystal lube, tribal lube, and I'm just going to put it around here until I see basically it looks like it's shiny. The surface looks shiny. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the head lid, make sure that it's facing the proper orientation. I'm going to turn the STA facing towards you and the Megalodon logo and everything and the subcon connectors will be facing your back. So I'm just going to simply drop this down into place. Looks good. Good seal. No rolled O-rings. Everything's lined up and I snap it down. And then I'm going to lay it down just like this. STA facing up and the rig itself facing towards me. If required, install the primary handset, HUD, and secondary handset, lockdown subcon connectors. This thing has been totally disassembled, maybe because I traveled with it, whatever. So I'm going to go ahead. As you can see, there's no handsets connected to anything. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So the system's laying down. I'm going to come over here. There's a HUD. I'll go ahead and connect that in a minute. Handset, Apex 4 handset will go on the left side. And I'll go for my petrol. I'll not use the Nerd and I'll put it on the right side. So because we have a primary side or a secondary side, we all, that's also known as an A network and B network, the A network is going to have, or the primary side will have the HUD and the handset, and the secondary side or the B network will have the shear water. So I'll go ahead and tip this up. And what I'm gonna do real quick is I'll put a little bit of MCG uh, or Molly Coat 111 on here. It's a silicone. You don't put a lot on it. You put a little on your finger until your fingers look shiny. And you notice I've got tape on the ends of these. That's to protect the connectors. And I'm going to go ahead and coat the rubber seals, which keep water out, and the gold contacts in and out. And I'll go ahead. Install that on the primary network. Come over to the HUD. Do the same thing. See, I have enough on my fingers uh, to do all of the subcon connectors. Go ahead and put this on the other primary network and lock down the subcon connectors. your water and I can see when I connected everything to the head that the power has automatically turned itself on which is fine that's a good thing okay now let's go ahead when I'm done with this one now I'm gonna go ahead and double check Everything is good to go. All right, now I'll go ahead and lay the unit down. And I'll take the handsets and everything and I'll carefully droop them over the floor, which clears up all this area right here. When you're done with your greases, always put the caps back in place so that way they're not getting coated with dust and dirt and so on, especially if it's auction compatible grease. Next is mount cylinders and install O2 and dill first stage assemblies. So since I haven't used this for a while, I'm going to go ahead and grease my shadow mount stainless steel pins. And I'll, on this little ball uh, bearing right here, I'll make sure I treat that really well. And I'll put that back in place. Grease that up.
All right, so I'll stand this up one more time. And what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and do the dill first. I'll hold the dill in this such manner, put it in place, and then I'll gently install. Make sure the ring is going down. You don't wanna make have this ring right here be folded and get pushed in the folded state next to the cylinder and the gas plenum canister. You'll never be able to re remove it without getting a piece of string or something. So always make sure it's out like that. Then I'll go ahead and rotate the meg so it's facing me so it doesn't tip. Do the same thing here. Put in place, lock it down, and then I'm done. Lay it down gently, move the handle out of the way, and I'm ready to go. And let's see, put the... Okay, I'll lay that down on top. It's my pneumatic system for the dilulant side. Here's the pneumatic system for the O2 side. And of course, I'm gonna be checking everything as I go. One thing you wanna ensure you have is the O-ring inside your first stages. So I check the O-ring, screw down the DIN connector. And you can see as I do everything, gravity is acting as a third hand for me. Check the O-ring, put it together. So everything's out of the way and uh, it's used as a third hand. So it's really efficient this way. Okay. Install O2 supply uh, hose to O2 supply intake on head. That's this little hose right here. There's a red cap on my O2 intake, dust cap. I'll remove it. Now let's go ahead, connect it up real quick. Install BC bladder and install backplate assembly. So everything here is out of the way. Hoses, O2 hose is connected. Remove my, my uh, wing nuts, washer. And I'll go ahead to my BC. Put in on the appropriate grommet that I like. Next is the back plate assembly. All right, screw those down nice and tight. Okay, everything's out of the way, nice and clean. Good to go. Mount counterlungs to back plate assembly, inhale on right, exhale on left. So this is the top of shoulder counter lung, which will sit in this fashion here. Vent valve, ADV, ADV has already been installed. And I'm looking at this, this is, looks nice and lubricated right here, so I'm not gonna add any more crystal lube to it or tribal lube. Go ahead and connect up the anti strap. Attach the two Velcro fixtures. Nice and tight. And then I'm gonna lock down the top tri-glide with the bungee at the bottom. Just like that. Once again, attach the anti strap. Lock down the top of shoulder count along. Two fixtures to the shoulder strap. And again, tri-glide, stainless tri-glide, goes under the bungee. There you go. Vacuum check DSV or BOV directional valves and mouthpiece. Confirm flow right to left with no air leak. 
air leaks. So today I'm going to be using the ISC BOV, uh, the bailout valve. So I'm going to go ahead and check the directional valves uh, inside the BOV. These must absolutely function. In order to uh, ensure that you don't rebreathe CO2, you must make sure that both the check valves function properly. It's like having scrubber or fresh scrubber in your CO2 canister. Also, you want to make sure that the two O-rings on your head uh, fit tightly inside the CO2 canister system. So this way you don't have any CO2 bypass. Those are some critical areas of the rebreather itself. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. So what I did was I blocked the exhale side and I inhaled, and that meant I was checking this uh, check valve over here. And then to check this check valve, I just simply exhale. So once again. That was an inhalation. Exhalation on this side, okay? So I know each check valve functions properly. Now, you notice before I took it out of my mouth, other than to talk to you, I had to close the valve. This is critical when you start to learn how to use a rebreather. Before you ever take this, the BOV or dive surface valve or DSV out of your mouth, make sure this is always closed. If you take this out of your mouth with it open, you will introduce ambient air into the breathing loop. You don't want to do that ever. You also don't want to introduce water into the breathing loop, and I guarantee someday you will forget. If you're a mixed gas diver and you leave this open and you have a helium mix inside your loop, you will add nitrogen to your breathing loop and it can add to, possibly add to decompression, absolutely add to more narcosis, but you won't know that. So you've effectively changed uh, the gas mixture you were planning on diving in your breathing loop. So once again, before you ever take the DSV or BOV out of your mouth, close it, put it down beside you, in front of you, go ahead and talk, chat, whatever, and then Go ahead and put it back in your mouth, exhale everything out of your lungs, and then open and start breathing again and check your PO2, of course. So now I've checked all this. Now because I have a BOV, I have a second stage right here. So it's, if it's in the closed position, I'm going to go ahead and just inhale on it. And what I just did is I inhaled, I check the exhaust valve, the primary diaphragm, I also checked the connection here and the QC6 female down here for any leaks. Now if you put this in your mouth and you do inhale to check for leaks and you draw some air from it, it's most likely from the air that's been stored here from, the prior, uh, from prior use. So just keep inhaling, it, that's a good sign. So make sure you inhale and exhale once again and make sure you can draw a proper negative. Alright, so it's closed. I'm going to go ahead and droop it over. Gravity is helping me. So I check that. 